Definitely voting for Green Lake. <laughs> okay. I'd like to call this special council meeting to order. Madam Clerk, the roll call. All members of council are present, your worship, with the exception of Councillor Zanko. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest? If not, uh, can I have a, who has the motion to go into closed session? Councillor McDermott. Thank you, your worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Butler. The council does now go into closed session at 5.03 p.m. to discuss the following. A, pursuant to section 239.2c of the Municipal Act, 2001, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality of the local board to repropose acquisition of land parking. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Do you support this? Mr. Zanka, you have a resolution that we rise and reconvene from closed session? Yes, thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Butler. That council does now rise and reconvene from closed session at 5:30 p.m. with report that council proceed as or that staff proceed as directed. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Councilor Dubino, you have the resolution to adjourn. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Noyes. That council adjourns at 5:31 p.m. to reconvene into a regular meeting of council on March 25th, 2019. All those in favor? Opposed? All those in favor of adjourning? Where's my hand? Opposed? Okay. You, you, must be, you must be tired. Okay, so we'll uh, come back at 6 o'clock. <laughs> I'd like to call this regular council meeting to order. We'll begin this meeting by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Mississaugas of the New Credit, and the Anishinaabe people. Madam Clerk, uh, or I guess would all of you rise for the invocation, please? We meet to serve our community and endeavor to be worthy custodians of all that has been entrusted to us. Let us be concerned only for what will promote good government. May we bring to our council chamber minds that think and hearts that feel, so that in our deliberations we may display imagination, wisdom and courage, and the will to do our work for the good of all. Madam Clerk, the roll call, please. All members of council are present, Your Worship. Uh, Regional Councillor Sinia has uh, sent his regrets. Thank you. I noticed that there is an addendum this evening, and that is to correct the uh, location of motions and notices of motion on uh, our agenda. They should be switched. Um, and... Just a, a few, a few announcements. Um, really, a mixed, mixed emotion uh, series of announcements. The very first relates to the loss uh, at the end of last week of one of our local volunteer firefighters, uh, a member of our community and a uh, member of a very large extended family in uh, in Fort Erie. Um, Harry Hayslip was 32 years of age, and uh, uh, his time ended far too soon. Uh, the um, visitation for his uh, his service is uh, was today, this afternoon, and this evening from six till nine. And uh, members of council will be attending the uh, visitation later on. The funeral is scheduled for tomorrow at uh, is it eleven o'clock? It's one o'clock. One o'clock at the leisure at the leisureplex. Um, and uh, as I said. It's a tremendous loss, not only for Harry's family, but also the uh, fire service in our community and our community at large. The second item is on a happy note, and that is um, this year marks the 60th anniversary of Owen Schweier as a member of the Ridgeway Lions Club. So that's almost longer than any of us have been around, certainly longer than a number of you. And uh, Owen has been... Uh, uh, a major presence in the Lions Club and in Ridgeway for uh, those entire 60 years. Um, his kids grew up in town. I'm sure some of you know him. He's been a, a credit to uh, his family and to the community uh, through his volunteer work. And I know that on uh, Wednesday evening, the Lions Club will be, I shouldn't say this, maybe he doesn't know. 
uh, will be recognizing his 60 years of service. So congratulations to Owen Swire. Um, the third item has to do with uh, the bowl for kids' sake, which uh, Councillor McDermott, Councillor Luberts, Councillor Dubonneau, and I attended on Saturday evening. I have to believe that the largest single uh, generator of revenues fundraising for the uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters is Councillor McDermott. did a fantastic job. Uh, Jonathan, if you need money, I would suggest you contact <laughs> Councillor McDermott. Um, anyways, it was a fun time, and uh, um, we certainly uh, enjoyed the evening. And then finally, I want to make a brief comment with respect to the news that came out this morning about the uh, impending closure of the uh, local YMCA. This has been a, a facility in our community and a gathering place in our community uh, for almost 30 years, uh, not quite, but it has been a central um, focal point for a lot of families, still used by a lot of young people, uh, young families, uh, seniors, and um, we're at the beginning of uh, efforts to uh, find out solutions for the problem. The, some of you will know that the YMCA was created by a local fundraising. It was run by a local board up until the last uh, several years and when it became part of the Niagara Y. Um, it's, uh, it's a large um, contributor to our efforts to provide the type of recreational cultural programming for uh, people in our community. It's something that we utilize as an attractor for uh, families uh, to our community. So it's something that um, we will be working on as a council. It's early days, we just found this out. We'll be taking every effort that we can to make sure that um, the services that are provided will continue, whether in the guise of the Y or in some other fashion. I can't believe the number of individuals who have contacted me by phone, by email, um, and, and spoken to me directly with respect to their desire to get involved. And I'm sure that each and every one of the council members has had the same experience. So we will be um, looking at um, opportunities and strategies going forward. I want the community to be assured that we will do um, what we can to make sure that uh, the services, the programs, and the activities continue on at, uh, at uh, that facility going forward. And there'll be more to talk about um, later on. That takes us to declarations of pecuniary interest. Councillor Dubineau. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to declare a conflict on uh, agenda item 10E, the Community Gaming Development Corporation approval of 2019-2020 permitting applications as I am a member or involved with seven organizations who receive uh, lottery licenses. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Noyes. Thank you, Mayor Redekop. Um, I'm also declaring a conflict on the same 10E. Um, item title, Community Gaming Development Corporation approval of the 2019 to 2020 permittee application in that I am a member of one of the application permittees, permitters, um, Black Creek Students Alliance. Thank you. Any others? Councilor McDermott. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, the same uh, 10E, um, the YMCA of Niagara, as I have a family member who works there. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I also have a conflict with respect to item 10E. I represent several of the organizations, or, or I'm a member of some of them, so I'll be declaring a conflict with respect to the whole report. And uh, I've completed my little green sheet and provided it to you. I'd remind other members of council you have to complete your form. Um, okay. Uh, are there any others? If not, there's uh, one notice of an upcoming public meeting, and that relates to a change to our zoning bylaw with respect to the uh, public meeting that will be held on uh, April the 8th, 2019, here in the council chamber at uh, 6 p.m. with respect to shipping cargo containers and vehicle bodies. Uh, in the absence of the regional councillor, that takes us to presentations and delegations. And the first delegation this evening is Lisa Kelleher, market manager for Advancing Crystal Beach. Good evening.
and incorporating social development. This is achieved by tightening the inner circle of production, that is, improving time and resource efficiency from use to re reuse, improving product integrity and keeping the finished products circling longer, and finally, cascaded use of the biodegradable components. An intentional byproduct of this system is the reduction, or ideally elimination, of the waste stream, which utilizes less to no infrastructure for disposal. The Makers Movement refers to the people that design and re-engineer these products. Makers are innovators that proactively design in product life extension and customize over the entire product lifestyle, life cycle. The Fixers Collective features Fixperts, which are experts who can fix your stuff. It's a collaboration for aggressive asset recovery with improv improvisational fixing and progressive reworking. Fixperts exchange repair information, increasing the knowledge base of the community and the longevity of the product. Engage, empower, and evolve. Can we do this on a local scale? Enter Advancing Crystal Beach, our nonprofit community organization spearheaded by the formidable Orma Bleaks. Not sure what happened just there. Engage, empower, and evolve are three words you will find on their website. Their mission is to establish and promote community-based initiatives for all residents and tourists of Crystal Beach and surrounding areas. Their vision is for an inclusive community of connected, empowered, and engaged individuals. The market ticks all their boxes. A circular economy, makers and fixers movement, advancing Crystal Beach, all point to the maker's market, a perfect fit. Crystal Beach maker's market, where the conversation is. Our logo is opening quotation marks. Our market is offering an invitation to speak, to have our community's voice heard. Crystal Beach Makers Market is a community resource which reflects the rich heritage of the Crystal Beach community and serves as a source of civic pride for present and future generations. It makes available to the Niagara region and its numerous visitors a platform for the cultivation of garden organic producers, food preparation experts, and importers of fair trade food, improving access to raw nourishment and produce and a progressive forum for Greater Fort Erie's up-and-coming innovators, engineers, and designers. Our market will run every Sunday and any festival promotional days throughout the season from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Our market season is the first Sunday in May, May 5th this year, until including Thanksgiving Sunday. It will be divided into three sections, makers, fixers, and food. And we will present the gallery, Shop Without Guilt, the gallery, upcycled, repurposed, functional, featuring makers, those pioneers utilizing and adapting new technologies and old to find unique approaches to product design, business models, and our lifestyles, utilizing methods to maintain and promote the biosphere's integrity. The gallery will germinate an incubator-style maker section that promotes a holistic approach to manufacturing and production, engaging the community's imagination. The Repair Cafe, Join our dynamic repair cafe and learn from our resident fix fixperts, where groups of individuals, fixperts, expert fixers, come together to fix or upcycle products, work collaboratively, and partner with a diverse range of people to promote sustainability in a fun and inclusive manner. The repair cafe will empower our community to respect the limits of nature and its resources, ensuring minimal consumption and waste by spotlighting sustainability. And this is where it gets interesting. We have a rotating panel of fixperts set to help on site, including for knife, blade sharpening, bike repair, computer phone diagnostics, furniture repair, clothes mending, jewelry repair, small engine, small appliance repair, and more on site at the market. And we're developing a program with the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development through their apprenticeship programs to also engage in the Repair Cafe. The kitchen table will feed your soul with new, delicious nutrition. 
an Epicurean pleasure center featuring natural farm delights, fair trade and processed foods, offering the alternative nutritious choice, healthy for the consumer, the earth, the growers, harvesters, and producers. The kitchen table will emphasize the importance of the combined com common good of all living species and biosphere through preservation, protection, restoration, improvement of the natural environment. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we're also introducing a grassroots program. Grassroots initiatives are networks of organizations that lead innovative, bottom-up solutions for sustainable development, solutions that respond to our local situation and the interests and values of our community. Our grassroots program fosters synergistic relationships with organizations of similar ethos, highlighting the spirit of cooperation, uniting traders with local nonprofits and businesses, and collectively they are encouraged to develop a specialized program for their chosen grassroots program day. Our grassroots program vendor themes. Their partner, our vendors, their partner nonprofits and local businesses representing the wealth of knowledge that Greater Fort Erie has to offer will be given free reign to create their own dynamic workshops and programs with full support from our media team. For example, a Celebrity Chef Day could unite a food vendor with a local restaurant and a local food bank. The chef from the participating restaurant would use ingredients from the organizing vendors, all while doing a food drive for the food bank. Another example could unite a local conservation club, one of our makers that works with wood, and a local shop that produces wood products. We have many grassroots programs in the works, so be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to keep us up to date with, to keep up to date with the event schedule. We're also going to introduce the Small Fry Club. This addresses the lack of children's engagement on site. Every first Sunday, we're going to have bouncy castles. The second Sunday will be the vendor workshops I talked about. Every third Sunday will be the last chance horse and pony rescue. The fourth Sunday will be local children's group performances with special guest appearances by Little Ray's Nature Center, Mad Science Safari Niagara, and Reptile Kingdom, maybe more. The next Innovators Club, ages 13 to 17. For this hard to reach age group, we are in program development with Bill Connor, program lead of co-op education at GFES. As well, there will be direct involvement with the vendors in creating workshops for them. We have also developed a robust database of students willing to volunteer on site. And how did we do this? With our extensive grassroots programming, they can choose to come to the market on a day we are promoting something they are interested in. We had a number of infrastructure deficits on site, and our aims this year are to develop a financial support plan to support and solidify our standing in the community and to research venue stabilization. During a vendor meeting in January, despite the on-site deficits identified at that time at the current venue, which is the parking lot at the Crystal Chandelier, thank you, Carol McKay, the vendors voted overwhelmingly to remain for this season, exhibiting fierce loyalty to Carol. Amongst other on-site improvements, we will be refurbishing her shed to act as a European-style market hut for ACB and are pursuing the expansion of the market footprint to allow for our grassroots program that will enrich all parties involved, including the Crystal Chandelier, the market and its vendors, and any and all local businesses and nonprofits that will participate. So, now we have come to the information booth. The revitalization of our market coupled with the transformation of the existing shed from decrepit to world-class market stall has created a respectable and irresistible location for a professional information booth. The anticipated increase in traffic is the perfect opportunity to showcase the progression of Greater Fort Erie. Never before has there been a more relevant location for promoting what Greater Fort Erie has to offer. We can get serious about accessing our tourists. Close to 40,000 of them pass by our location every season. And How now... How long do you anticipate, Ms. Gallagher? I'm How sorry? How much longer do you anticipate? Um, I'm almost done. Okay, well, we have a motion to extend this for a couple of minutes. Councilor McDermott, seconded by Councilor Zanko. All in favor? It's carried. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So we're going to relaunch with what is called a restart party. 
The re repair revolution has arrived and our panel of experts and restarters will be there to help you with knife sharpening, small appliance repair, and other such things as I uh, mentioned earlier. Don't despair, repair. As a circle is without beginning or end, the same may be said of the eternal spirit of our community. Feel the pride that is forever Crystal Beach. And that is carved in stone at Queen's Circle. The globalization of production and a recent actual amalgamation and intimation of regional amalgamation of services seems to be taking things out of our hands and can seem mind boggling. But let's have faith in the maxim, everything old is new again. The makers movement, that's our moms always improvising at the last minute. The Fixers Collective, fancy words to describe the guys in the garage. And so we've come full circle, recognizing again the value that our individuals represent to our community. Let's stand, let's unite. Crystal Beach Makers Market, where the conversation is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Kelleher. Thank you. Uh, sounds pretty exciting. Thank so you. you're starting up in May. May, that's correct. Perfect. Uh, any questions of Ms. Kelleher? Noise. Well, thank you, Mayor Redekoff, through you to the President. Thank you for your presentation and your enthusiasm. <laughs> um, is there a website that we can visit as this, this is ongoing? You may have mentioned it, but I, I didn't catch there it. There is. It's advancingcrystalbeach.com backslash market. Okay. And I believe our IT expert is working on it this week, so it'll, it'll develop in the, next, in the next three to four weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counselors? Thank you very much, Ms. Kelleher. Thank you. Much look appreciated. I uh, look forward to this because it's pretty exciting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Uh, that takes us to our second delegation. Good luck. Takes us to our second delegation, Mr. Jim Miller. Good evening, Mr. Miller. Good evening. Mayor Riddikop and councillors. Um, tonight I have a uh, presentation I want to put out in regards to the uh, families living on the affected area of Canada Drive. Uh, the property is owned by the town of Fort Erie. A contractor was hired to remove the ash trees. Excuse me, Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. You've got. Uh, I have, his, I have your. I have your presentation. Oh, you do. I do. We can, we can get that up for everyone to see. Yeah. Oh, I don't know that. That's okay. Right. That's okay. I can't read that. Oh, I got to read you have your, yeah. That's okay. I got another. Pair. No, I can't read with them. Okay. I'll read it off here. That's fine. That's okay. fine. Yep, and this will good. just this will just play in the background then. Oh, okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Those are your pictures, right? They're. Pictures Nick took. Yes, okay, you couldn't do fine. mine, or could you? I, I did photos. Yeah, so Nick, yeah. Nick helped you with this. Yeah. So okay. if you want to go to the next picture, you okay. just hit this button right here. Oh, okay. Would you like me to stay here and I can just no, no, go that's through them? It's okay. okay. So yeah. just this one right here, okay? That's fine. Okay. That's all I got to do. Yeah. All right, let's start all over again. Uh, this presentation represents the concerns and recommendations of families living on the affected area of Canada Drive. This property was owned by the town of Fort Erie and a contractor was hired to remove the ash trees. Uh, as he was uh, removing the ash, tra or ash trees, he was using chainsaws and he used a bobcat machine, which had a blade on it that pushed the trees over, managing to mow down any and all trees in their pathway thus leaving a wide area of destruction. Was this really necessary to destroy the, the uh, landscape around here? And I can show you some pictures that I've taken of the area. Nick's taken it, pictures of the area behind you. Uh, these pictures happen to show what we believe is an awful mess to leave behind somebody's home. And the contractor uh, should have being contracted to clean up the mess. Um, I worked in construction for 35 years, and anybody that worked for me as, as, as a project manager, their job was to clean this job site up to make it safe. The way this, these uh, contractors worked, they worked on a safe way, 
they piled it all up, they left it all over, and it looks like it's, it's just terrible to have that in your backyard. When, we, when my wife and I moved to Fort Erie, we uh, bought this property because it backed onto a wetland and nobody was supposed to build behind us. But 10 years later, things change. And um, I asked the contractor uh, if he was contracted to clean up the fallen trees. And he replied, no and the town of Fort Erie, Fort Erie probably won't clean them up either. And that was his answer. So, uh, moving ahead here. Um, I have talked to all the homeowners along this tree removal area, and they are appalled at the destruction of this area. It, is po it was populated with birds, blue jays, cardinals, doves, woodpeckers, etc., as well as deer and wild turkeys and other roaming animals. The wildlife are losing their homes and feeding grounds. The residents want this area cleaned up as soon as possible as it is an unsightly and unsafe area for people to wander through or kids to get out there playing in behind the homes and stuff like that. Um, one of the uh, residents at 893 Canada Drive reported that when it rained a couple of weeks ago, they had flooding in their backyard, which they never had before, and this was caused by uh, the buildup of crap that's on the ground and the water couldn't run through it. Um, their property line, the, uh, along their property line, it, it, this, there's water laying around, there's water trying to get through. Uh, the property areas need to be cleaned up. It's, it's well, you can see it's a mess. Um, let me see now, I read, I went over that. Another, uh, one thing about leaving this, if this is going to be left, whoop, sorry. Um, the values of our homes will be decreased because it's such a mess and you don't want to look at that. I know we paid extra money when we purchased our home because look what's behind us, a forest and it's gone. Our taxes are high, so uh, maybe some of that money can be used for uh, cleaning up the area for safety reasons and restore the awesome view we once had. Uh, I got another, I got another uh, page here that uh, was written by my neighbor. And uh, while I anticipated the desire of the town's Economical Advisory Committee to let the uh, fallen trees decay naturally. The piles are felled logs stacked high, several feet high and are not natural at all. They are human made. So if a natural look is desired, the first thing is to dismantle those stacks and those log piles and uh, clean that area up so that trees can grow, um, other vegetation will grow, but with the property got left there, you won't, it won't happen. Um, to make the cut area look a little better, could the town either A, plant small shrubs or trees along the perimeter of the woodlot while cutting of trees had left uh, wide open areas? The other recommendation would be uh, small shrubs or trees that residents could plant just behind their lots to fill in the open area. Uh, one possibility would be to provide residents near the woodlot with suitable trees that they themselves could plant. These trees, of course, be uh, disease resistant and uh, appropriate for the local environment. Perhaps these residents could be given priority in tree giveaways like that held in Fort Erie in the spring of the year. Um, the town may prefer option A to ensure the proper plants are used and they are located in such a way to provide a uniform look. The uh, residents of Canada Drive would like to thank Councillor Nick Dubineau for putting this motion forward and would appreciate the town of Fort Erie, your prompt attention to this matter. Thank you very much.
And one other thing I would like to mention is if uh, you counselors could all get together one day and uh, take a walk over, walk down through there and just see what kind of crap we, we were left with. And that's, it's not suitable for taxpayers like ourselves. Or maybe you guys uh, wouldn't mind having that in your backyard, but us citizens don't appreciate it. So can you see what you can do for us? Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Before Thank you. you go, Thank do you. members of the council have any questions? Thank you very much for your diligence and uh, the photos. Okay, and if, if, if you can let us, let me know. Or... We're going to be dealing with uh, Councilor Dubonneau's motion shortly. Yep. Okay, so if you stick around, you'll, you'll get the word. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That concludes uh, presentations and delegations this evening, and, and that takes us to the consent agenda. Are there any items that anyone wishes removed from the consent agenda? If not, uh, Councillor Dubineau, you have the resolution regarding consent agenda items. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Butler, that Council approves the consent agenda items as recommended. Are there any questions or comments? Councillor Luberts. Thank you very much, Mayor Radicop. Um, just going through the uh, minutes of the uh, ad hoc committee. And uh, I think maybe I'll uh, comment on the uh, last part of the, uh, the, um, the minutes. I think page three, old business item C. Right. And uh, I did have a, a conversation with uh, Andrew, and uh, when uh, the uh, ad hoc committee was first being put together, and uh, I did uh, tell him that we should share information, right? And that I had some information. Excuse me, Councillor Luberts. Mr. Young, you're distracting us. Uh, continue on, please, Councillor Luberts. So anyway, I, uh, I said, well, hopefully, the two, I was at that time with the, uh, the uh, Waverly Beach Roundtable, and I said that I would hope that the two organizations would share information, right? And uh, so we had a couple meetings, and when we had those meetings, we, all the information was brought to that meeting and recorded in the minutes. And those minutes were provided to staff to distribute to the rest of council, and obviously, it sounds like they didn't distribute those those minutes to the ad hoc committee. But I don't have any more information than the ad hoc committee. And uh, I've read this a couple of times in their minutes, and I'd like the ad hoc committee to know I don't have any more information than you do. And that was the conversation that Andrew and I had that I would hope that they would that we would share information. So I just want to get that there clear. And, uh, and then on uh, page two, I think the uh, fourth paragraph talks about the solids in the water that get caught by the old dance hall foundation and they can't circulate back into the water. I think that uh, during the first couple meetings that we had with the Waverly Beach Roundtable, uh, we got a lot of comments from some of the experts that were at that meeting and other experts that I had talked to on the uh, telephone. And uh, it was the, uh, the pier that appeared to be uh, uh, trapping the, uh, all the algae and everything in that area. It's, that's the broken pier that's off to the, to the uh, west. And I don't know anybody that was saying that it was the foundation from the old dance hall that was uh, causing the, uh, the, uh, the algae and the other uh, um, things that get blocked up in there. I think it's the wall. My recollection is it's, it's both Councillor um, Luberts because 
there could be no free movement of water because of the pier and because of the concrete, uh, the, the uh, foundation for the old pool. I think that's the difficulty that there's a little area where there's little uh, ability for water to move. And so I think it's yeah. both sides. At least that's what we were told several years ago uh, when we were looking at putting in the, uh, the uh, trail uh, and looking at how that needed to be shored up. Um, we had a coastal engineer uh, take a look at it and it indicated that that was that was an impediment. The the lack of free flow of water was yeah. an impediment for. Uh, uh, I'm going to get to that as well. Okay. But uh, anyway, uh, the other uh, uh, paragraph F talks about uh, bringing Alfred Garofalo uh, to speak with the uh, with the group, and uh, I just. I need to uh, bring it forward and remind everybody that uh, Albert Garof Garofalo, he did have a program down there at Waverly Beach with beach grasses, and they planted beach grasses. And when we had one of our Waverly Beach roundtable meetings, after the meeting, we went down to the beach, and he was appalled at what happened down there, and his beach grasses were destroyed by a gentleman that's down there with his excavator and his big eye beam removing uh, algae from the lake and whatever other work that they did down there. Uh, they put the new boardwalk in there, the concrete boardwalk, and uh, uh, Albert Garofalo and his group, they got grant money from the uh, governments and uh, they planted beach grasses they were all trampled all over. Nobody, no regard to them. There was, uh, they made some uh, wooden slat um, uh, beach mats for a sidewalk so that you could walk out onto the beach without walking on the plants. And when they put the new boardwalk in with the concrete, I remember at this meeting, a council meeting, I asked that those uh, mats be uh, taken care of and put aside so that they wouldn't get destroyed or misplaced. We don't know where they are now. They're gone. And now you want Mr. Garofalo to come to your group and, and speak about planting sea grasses and beach grasses. And I don't know that, to me, I would be embarrassed to ask him to come back and speak with us. Do you want to take these minutes out and, and deal with them separately, Councillor Luberts? Uh, I have just one more comment. Well, it sounds like you may not want to support uh, receiving these. Well, you're going to support them anyway, right? I but can, we're just receiving I the just minutes. I just want to make comments. It's, we're receiving them, and we're not approving anything. That's right. We're just receiving right? the minutes. Yeah. So in uh, paragraph uh, H, the... Uh, uh, Mr. Brady was commenting about removing the groin. And uh, I'd just like to know what Mr. Brady is referring to when he speaks about the groin. Mr. Brady? Uh, uh, through you to Councilor Luberts. I'm referring to that uh, structure that it's about midpoint of Waverly Beach. It goes straight out. It's concrete. The old broken down the pier. The old broken down pier, yeah. which is acting as a groin. Okay, thank you. And uh, that's another thing, Mayor Redekop. We uh, had one of the meetings that we had with the Waverly Beach Roundtable. It was determined that that uh, pier is not a groin. And a groin is built for a special purpose. And we decided... And it was agreed upon that that is not a groin. It's not meant to be a groin. And uh, it's a pier. Now, I know that some of you might think, well, what does that matter? And it matters to me because if you're going to have minutes to, and you're going to bring them minutes to this council, at least be accurate on what you're talking about. And that pier is not a groin. That's just my comment on that. And then they talked about maybe getting an engineer study done along the shore for whatever reason. And uh, 
during, again, during the meetings that we had with the Waverly Beach Roundtable, we had a, a gentleman, Dr. Arnott, at the meetings. And Dr. Arnott, for those of you that don't know him, is a coastal engineer. And he has done coastal work in Canada and in England. And he recommended that we don't do any studies or get any reports along the shoreline. Councillor, Councillor Luberts, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you there because these are the minutes of the meeting. And yeah. in that meeting, they talked about an engineering study. Yes. We're, re we're receiving the minutes. If you don't agree with the minutes, that's fine. We that's don't need right. to get the history of uh, what's happened at another committee meeting. So. Um, well, all I'm saying as Mayor Redekop is I'm not right. I don't think that they should be going and getting a $50,000 study because Dr. Arnott clearly said in his report that a study wouldn't be accurate when you're doing along the lake. You should get opinions on what we should do along the shoreline. And, but it was clear in his report. But obviously, the ad hoc committee didn't get that report. Well, I don't know whether they did or not, but it's, it's beyond what we're de dealing with here. We're dealing with what's in the minutes. That's apparently what was discussed. Yeah. It's in the minutes. So and, if you and want my to, job excuse is to me, comment excuse what's me, on the minutes. Excuse me, I'm not finished. If you want to take this out of the consent agenda so that we can deal with it separately, that's fine because you may not want to, you may not want to support receiving it. Well, we can take it out of you. It seems like you would like to take it out. So yes, I'll ask that we take it only out. If, only if you're planning on voting against receiving it. Well, I'll vote against it then. Okay, fine. So yeah. we'll deal with we'll deal item with it separately. We'll deal with item 3D separately when we get to voting on this. Anything further, Councillor Liberts? I can, I can go further. Once it's on the floor again, right? No, deal with it now. All you're right. Up on the floor, you're dealing with it. Okay, You've gone so through it paragraph by paragraph. Anyway, we discussed before about having some kind of study done on the water flow. Okay, but I've already told you that that's beyond what we're doing, dealing with here. We know that you've had that discussion. You don't agree that there needs to be an engineering study because you've been told by a coastal engineer you don't need a study. I get, we get that. Yes, well, uh, am I not allowed to comment on no. these minutes? They're provided to us, they're in front of us. You've, Anything that's in the minutes, I can comment on. You've already commented on them. and I was interrupted while I was commenting. That's correct, you were. Yes. Because you're beyond what your scope of comment is. What you, is the scope of the comment? What's in the, what's, you can ask questions about what's in, the re, what's in these minutes. You can ask questions about what's in the minutes. Yeah, so there's an engineering report in the minutes. But you're not asking questions, you're giving comments. Yes, okay. Did the ad hoc committee members get the report that, the, uh, that Dr. Arnott sent back to the uh, to staff and the uh, and the uh, Waverly Beach Roundtable uh, Committee. Mr. Brady, would you know that? I'm not aware of that. Okay. Councilor Luberts? Well, those were provided to staff. Well, you asked whether the committee received them, and Mr. Brady has indicated he doesn't and, know that. And but then the, and Mr. Staff. Brady, Mr. Brady can look into that and provide you with a response. All right, okay. All right, that's, that's good enough, thanks. Okay. Are there any other questions uh, with respect to the items that are in the consent agenda, Councillor Noyes and then Councillor Dubinon? You can perhaps correct me then, because I also had a question about the Waverly Beach ad hoc committee. Should I be bringing it now or bringing it up later? You can. It's a simple question. Yeah, you can bring that now and let's deal with it. It's, it's regarding um, the, there's a reference about the septic beds and there were inspections on that, and one third were found to be found. I'm just wondering if any of those homes along that. I know it may not seem to be relevant, but. It's not relevant. It's not relevant. To these minutes, it's not. No, but again, if someone. It's not even relevant to whether or not they've got septic systems. I think the question is if they have septic systems, fine, but I don't think any of them do in that area. That's one of the concerns that, that's causing the algae problem is the septic. Is poor. Okay. Fine, but it's got nothing to do with short-term rentals. Okay. Any other questions with respect to any any of the items in the consent agenda except item 3D? Um, 
Uh, sorry, Councillor Dubino, you uh, you had a question. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'll I'll be brief. Um, I just want to uh, comment on to uh, be the uh, proclamation of uh, Autism Ontario uh, April second as World Autism Awareness Day. Um, I think it goes without saying that um, this has been in the news lately, and um, regardless of where you fall on this issue, um, I just want to express that um, the families of children with autism spectrum disorder in this community right now um, need our support they need our understanding and i am thrilled to see that we're making this proclamation and uh, i'm glad it's there and i really appreciate that i did have a question or rather a comment related to waverly beach but i can wait how we okay. decide to deal let's, with that uh, let, let's let's wait um okay if there are no other questions or comments all those in favor of the consent agenda item except item 3d Unopposed, that is carried. So we're going to deal with item 3D. Councillor Duvino, you had a question? Uh, yes, thank you, Worship. Just uh, with regard to the uh, the minutes of the uh, ad hoc committee, um, I appreciate uh, Councillor Lubert's comments earlier about uh, the information um, with Mr. Holdsworth. Um, I would hope that if there is any information that he comes across at any point in the future, certainly he was offering comment up here on, on a few different things. I would hope that he would share that with Mr. Holdsworth or the board going, or um, the committee going forward so that we could address those concerns and act on them appropriately. Um, also another comment with regard to uh, bringing in experts. I, I don't think at any point um, with us sitting as councillors here who aren't necessarily um, experts in the subject matter being discussed that I, I don't think it's an embarrassment at any time for us to have to bring in an expert whether it's one time ten times or a hundred times we want to make sure that we get things right we want to make sure we do it properly and we want to make sure that we make the best decisions for the taxpayers of the town of Fort Erie so if that in that case if we have to bring in an expert and repeatedly do it over and over again fair enough that's their job and our job is to consult with them so uh, going forward I, uh, I hope that that's something uh, people will remember. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Luberts? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Attica. Just to follow up on, on Councillor Dubinow's comments, I don't have a problem with bringing in experts either. That's not my point. But if we're going to bring in experts into this town to do projects and then go and destroy that project, I find it embarrassing that we would ask that professional to come back and give us more comments. Thanks. Sure, Councillor Zanko, why not? Thank you, Your Worship. I actually uh, chaired this meeting, so I'd like to make a couple comments. Um, first of all, uh, to your comment about the engineering design, it is noted, we did discuss it, but we are not in um, any form ready to bring that forward to Council. The committee in general is just looking for solutions to a problem that we've had for many, many years. There's many things that we've discussed here. Uh, we record minutes and it's, it's identified for your information, um, but there's no motion being made to bring an engineering report forward. With regard to um, Albert coming to our meeting, it was actually discussed more so in the context of perhaps some solutions to some of the ditches that we have. Um, it wasn't for additional uh, grass dunes being put at the beach. So I don't know if that makes you feel more comfortable, um, but in no way are we intending to embarrass uh, ourselves. We're just hoping that together we can come and, and essentially come up with some solutions. And Councillor Lubert, you're more than welcome to attend any of these meetings. I encourage you to, because it sounds like you have some good history. Uh, you have a lot of information that would most certainly be helpful to our group. Councillor Luberts. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Redekop. And uh, I'm not suggesting anything about the uh, engineering studies, but I just wanted you to know that an engineer did comment, and he said that you're better off, instead of spending a lot of money on a study, to get other engineers or other firms to give you opinions on what they think they should do because the water studies that we were talking about down there, he said that the water was too shallow to get an accurate study done. And he advised that we would just be wasting our money basically. So I just wanted the uh, organization, the 
ad hoc committee to understand that. And then as far as coming to your meetings, right, I need everyone to understand that the ad hoc committee, right, I had already started a committee and they developed this ad hoc committee and, and kind of squeezed me out. It was a political thing that was happening and I understand that. I'm not saying that I don't feel welcome to your meeting, but I'm just letting you know that I started a committee of com concerned citizens and we had a couple meetings and then all of a sudden that committee was squeezed out a new committee was formed, and I wasn't even asked if I would like to participate in that committee. So, yeah, thank you very much for your invitation, but I really don't think that I'm welcome. Okay. I, well, I think we know the history, and I don't disagree with the history. Um, okay. All those in favor of the uh, receiving those minutes? Opposed? That is carried. Well, that was easy. Um, so that takes us to new business and inquiries. Councillor McDermott, you have the resolution res relative to the Bridgeburg. Did I miss something? It was removed, and it was it was moved and seconded as part of the package. So it was just taken out to be voted on separately. So it would have been moved initially with the whole package. Uh, Councillor McDermott, on the Bridgeburg plan, we are. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Butler, that Council appoints Gail Spear, the Bridgeburg Station Downtown Business Improvement Board of Management for the period of ending uh, November 14, 2022. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That is carried. So before we go to the next resolution, um, all of you had uh, a little sheet that uh, required you to vote on new members for the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. You haven't given those to the clerk. Let's do that now. She can tabulate those while we're dealing with the next resolution. Councillor Noyes, you have the uh, next resolution with respect to the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. Thank you, Mayor Ritterkopf. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Dubonneau. That council accepts the resignation of Robin Sider from the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee and further council directs staff to proceed with filling the vacancy in accordance with the bylaw. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Councilor Noyes, you'll have the next resolution once you're given the names by uh, the clerk. Price Waterhouse is working on the tabulation right now. Yeah, I know, it's, it's happened. Why don't we uh, jump ahead and we'll deal with the appointment of the cemetery committee. Um, Councillor Lubert, you have that resolution. Uh, thank you, Mayor Redekop. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McDermott. That council appoints Bill Matthews to the Fort Erie Cemetery Advisory Committee for the period ending November 14th, 2022. Are there any questions or comments on that? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Madam Clerk? What are the names that should be inserted into the resolution? The two names that should be inserted are Graham Rignall and Rosalie Snyder. So, Councillor Noyes, with that information, would you please proceed with the resolution? Yes, moved move by myself and seconded by Councillor Dubonneau that Council appoints Graham Rignall, Rignall and Rosalie Snyder. Rosalie Snyder to the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee for the period ending November 14, 2022. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. 
so then um, that takes us to the resolution that some of us have a conflict with. So, Madam Clerk, who's the acting mayor? Councillor Noyes has a conflict. Councillor Dubonnel has a conflict. Councillor McDermott has a conflict, and I have a conflict. Councillor Butler, you have the resolution and seconded by. Be seconded by. Councillor Zanko, and that means Councillor Luberts, you get to have the chair. And where are we? I'm alive. We're at um, item. We're at item 10E. That is the resolution regarding. E. Yeah, the permit. All right. Okay. Councillor Butler can read it. All right, Councillor Butler, you have the resolution. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zanko, that Council approves the bingo lottery permit allocations for the period April 1st, 2019 to March 31st, 2020, pursuant to Appendix A of the memorandum dated March 18th, 2019 from the Community Gaming Development Corporation. That uh, resolution is on the floor. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor? That's just carry it. I'll give the chair back to you, Mayor Redekop. Thank you very much, Councillor Luberts. Are there any other inquiries or items of new business? Then uh, we will go to the motions and Councillor Owen. Oh. Councillor um, Luberts, can I give you back the floor because I have the next resolution, which is a motion. Yes, I'll give uh, me back the chair. Yes, go ahead, Mayor Redekop. Okay, thank you. I move seconded by Councillor Butler that staff provide a report to Council with recommendations with respect to the implementation of a program for the installation and monitoring of red light cameras at all traffic signals in school zones and any other permitted areas in the town of Fort Erie. And can I just speak to that yeah, very briefly? Yeah, thank you very much. Go ahead. Yeah, th this arises out of the uh, unbelievable number of people that have difficulty stopping at uh, red lights. Uh, I understand that occasionally people get caught, a light changes from green to yellow and they're, they're in a predicament as to whether they can get through the intersection or not. Most people will uh, go through safely and, and uh, particularly in winter if the roads are slippery. But I um, was sitting out uh, here at our lights at Municipal Drive in Garrison Road about three months ago and I couldn't believe that not only one vehicle went through what was clearly a red light on Garrison Road, but a second vehicle followed through. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen that throughout the town. And uh, it's bad enough when it's not in a school zone. It's unbelievably dangerous when it's in a school zone. This coupled with the, um, the attitude now, and I, some of you might recall that I brought out a stop sign to one of these council meetings uh, to try to alert the public to the difference between a stop sign and a yield sign. But many people think that uh, that red octagonal sign that says stop, that really just means slow down, look both ways, and then proceed. Um, so I don't know whether we'll make uh, much um, forward movement with respect to this particular initiative, but I do know that Mr. Walsh will take this up with the Traffic Coordinating Committee and the individuals that uh, would have some responsibility for this. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, councillors will support this because it's an epidemic. It's a dangerous epidemic, and it's a dangerous um, way for people to be driving their motor vehicles. Mr. Walsh, uh, sorry, and uh, acting no. uh, acting mayor, I wonder if Mr. Walsh has any comment. Yeah, um, all right, Mr. Walsh. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we discussed this at Traffic Coordinating Committee uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, a member of the region's tra transportation division was not present, but a member. Uh, uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Vukasic, that's how you pronounce it, uh, was present from the Niagara Regional Police. Um, uh, the police uh, understand your angst, Mr. Mayor, uh, although they do not want to, from Staff Sergeant's uh, opinion, they do not be, want to be the ones to install and maintain these. Uh, as, it's, um, as most of our traffic lights out here are in regionally controlled intersections, um, if, if the motion passes, I'll contact Region Transportation to see if there's an appetite up there 
and uh, regardless, bring report back. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you very Mayor. Much. Thank you, Acting Mayor. That that's fine, um, and perhaps the police can can do a little more. Um, they're not in favor of this initiative. Perhaps they can also do a little bit more um, monitoring of the speeding and how people disregard stop signs. I, I know they didn't say they're not in favor. They just don't want to bear the cost. That, that's that's fair enough. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none. All those in favor? None opposed. That's carried. Mayor Redekop, I'll hand the chair back to you. Thank you very much, Councillor Luberts. That takes us into Councillor Dubineau's resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Butler, that uh, whereas the town of Fort Erie is the owner of a parcel of land west and immediately adjacent to residential properties located on Canada Drive, and whereas the emerald ash borer has devastated Fort Erie's tree canopy, ne necessitating the need for dead ash trees to be felled to protect both persons and property from the effects of falling trees, and whereas the town of Fort Erie is responsible for felling dead ash trees located on property owned by the municipal corporation, including the property west of homes on Canada Drive. Now, therefore, be it resolved that town staff are directed to facilitate the removal and or disposal of felled ash trees remaining on the town-owned property to the west of homes on Canada Drive in a manner consistent with good forestry practices. And further, that the town's arborist is permitted to provide similar direction on other town-owned property when a large volume of hazardous trees is, trees is felled within a relatively small area on a case-by-case -case basis. Mr. Dubino, did you want to speak to that at all? I would, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think, uh, and I want to thank uh, Mr. Miller for his presentation and, and bringing this to my attention and, and getting a chance to see what happened back there. Um, I think you saw by some of the first pictures that it, it literally looks like a tornado had a path that went through there and there's quite a few trees left. So the first part of this resolution deals with the immediate need to clean up that area, um, not just for the aesthetics, but also for the safety. Um, you know, you get children, it's a residential area. I would hate to think one of those stacked up trees could potentially fall and harm someone. And there's also a more practical uh, um, risk where if we have a dry summer with all that timber there, uh, you've got residential properties so close, theoretically someone, uh, you know, smoking is bad, but people still do it. And if they uh, flicked a cigarette across, um, I would hate to think what would happen if we had, uh, you know, a brush fire or something happened so close to those homes. The second part of this um, it deals with some of the challenges that we've had with town-owned properties and the... Uh, the, uh, I, I don't want to necessarily say the requirement, but rather the policy that uh, trees be left in place. Now, when you look to how uh, the, the intent of that is, you know, if you have one tree fall down, it naturally is, it falls down due to, uh, you know, life cycle. Um, the, the, the best thing to do would be to leave it there. Let the tree decay, let it uh, return to the habitat, let it... Uh, you know, be used to provide nutrients for new trees to grow. But when you're talking about these properties and, and the emerald ash borer has devastated our canopy in such a way that we're taking down so many of these trees and we have woodlots that are entirely covered in ash trees. It becomes a challenge to have these felled trees remain on the property, not only for aesthetic reasons, but you know, if you have someone like uh, Mr. Miller or other residents on Canada Drive who then bring this up, afterward complaining about the mess, it's now going to cost us money to get the contractor back out there to remove these trees should this pass um, when we have an arborist on town staff who could have provided that direction anyway in accordance with um, the professional standards that they have to follow. So it's a two-pronged approach. It's about resolving the immediate issue and also hopefully preventing things like this from happening to the future, um, happening in the future to other residents as well. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Noyes? Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Redekop. Um, I have a question in regards to um, any alternatives, and I don't know if Mr. Kelly could, could address it. Would anybody want these felled trees, like for, for the wood? Does the wood have any value to anyone that they would come and get it for firewood? I don't know if ash are good burners or not. Mr. Waltz. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Typically when uh, ash trees are removed through our, through our contracts, the contractors save the wood and sell it as firewood. So I, I imagine there is some, some salvage value out there. 
I'm, if I can continue, then I would encourage that that be one of the alternatives that, that we seek. I'm in full support of this. I'm looking at some of the pictures that, that were provided. There were a lot of the, the felled trees leaning, leaning up against nearby trees, and that means like a, a good wind or even a child just you know pushing under whatever the tree could come down on top of them. So it definitely is a is an area of concern for danger. Now I do back on to my house does back onto the conservation area, and I do know that is the practice that they they cut down the trees and they leave it there. But that's not an area that that people would actually walk through. And this is an area that I think is just so inviting for the kids and other people from the area to go through. So I do think it's a safety issue that that should be dealt with and. Hopefully we can find a reasonable alternative that's not going to cost too much money. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Zanko and then Councillor Luberts. I thank you. I also support this, and I'm very happy that uh, Councillor Dubineau had um, included other areas or other, other town-owned properties. But my question is, we, we also have this issue, it seems, on some private properties. Um, you know, there, there's a residential area. There might be a woodlot. Uh, a, a private property owner has cleared the emerald ash borer trees, but yet just left a mess very similar to this. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of teeth around policy on removing this mess. I'm just wondering if um, you know we, we could perhaps, obviously this motion is pretty specific to town owned, um, but I'm wondering what we can do to create some better policy for pr private properties as well. Mr. Brady, any comments on that? Uh, through you to uh, the councillor. The policy of the town is, uh, pr and we insist on it, on private properties, is to leave it, to cut the ash trees and to leave them. And that is on the basis of the recommendations of our Environmental Advisory Committee. So the Environmental Advisory Committee has recommended that and the town has adopted that. That's why you see that around town. Councillor Zango. Okay, so I, and I understand that, um, and I, I would think that that was probably created in um, open space areas. But when you have a house, uh, an empty lot that has this issue, and then another house, it's exact same situation, other than the fact the town doesn't own this property. So I guess my question is, I understand the policy and open space designated areas, but when we're in a residential area with uh, multiple houses in the exact same scenario as this, if that's what we would maybe consider. Well, I, I think there's a distinction between single lots in, a, in an area and uh, a, wood, a wood lot. So I, I, know, the, I know the specific um, <laughs> uh, property that you're referring to, and, I, and I, I quite agree with you, that was cutting done as a result of a municipal order. Um, so that's, um, I think, I think if we're going to look at the policies though, we need to have a, a pretty broad understanding because there are biodiversity reasons why these, uh, cut trees are left on, on woodlot areas. Now, maybe, maybe the size of the woodlot, I don't know. Um, did you have anything further on this? Councillor Luberts? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Redekop. And, uh, you know, I, I went over this bylaw or this uh, motion pretty close and I looked at the uh, Niagara Region's uh, tree uh, preservation or conservation bylaw and uh, first of all um, in the beginning of this mo motion it's all it says that it's related to the policies of the uh, Environmental Advisory Committee but it the Environmental Advisory Committee is not the committee they don't have the policy Right, we we advise, we give advice to staff and to the town of Fort Erie. Right now, when uh, in the motion, when we're asking for um, things to, uh, what does it say about the uh, good forestry? It says that uh, that we want to remove these trees according to good forestry practices. And that's why the advisory committee came to the town staff and came to us, this council, and recommended, right? They advised to leave the trees down once you cut them. And that is because that is what is considered good forestry practice. And 
when you do your research and you do your uh, read your studies on the emerald ash borers and the removing of the trees, the one thing they want you to do is they want you to leave the trees there because it's good for the uh, biodiversity of the forest for the natural decaying of that tree, right? So that's why the EAC recommended that you leave the tree there, right? Secondly, yeah, when do you look at this uh, motion? I need to know what size is this, this piece of property? Is it a hectare? Because if it's not a hectare, I don't know that it's considered a woodlot, right? And then it doesn't fall under good forestry practices. If it is a actor, then we have to follow the bylaws. But as well, in the, the Niagara Region's bylaw, it does state that if you have a lot, right, even if they tell you to cut the trees down, they will not allow you to cut uh, the amount of trees that would take away the designation of the woodlot. So even though there would be some more dead trees, once you get to that point, you, ha you don't cut no more down. So we want to do good forest practices. So to me, I would say we need to leave the trees there according to Environmental Advisory Committee and according to good, sir, uh, good forestry practices. But having looked at the uh, slides that Mr. Miller brought forward, that is a mess. Now, I read the, uh, the bylaw from the, from the region and, and probably the only one that read it. Not to, not to discredit anybody, but there are provisions in there that talk about how you cut the tree down and how you go about taking these, these trees down. You don't just go in there uh, rickety rackety and just cut trees down and leave them laying on top of other trees like the slide showed. That there to me is wrong, right? And I would agree with that. But I'm, I don't know that I can support having these trees removed from their woodlot. If it's not a woodlot, well, yeah, then you can remove them because it's not. But if it's designated as a woodlot, then I, I think we have to, it says right here, you want to follow the good forestry practices, then let's follow it. Let's not do it one time and then ignore it another time. We have to be consistent, Mayor Redekop. Mr. Brady, do you know how large this particular municipal wood lot, wood lot is or parcel? Uh, yes, uh, uh, my Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller, please be. My immediate neighbor just looked it up, and it is exactly 1.01171 hectare. Okay, so um, if you go to good forestry practices, then then it may very well be that trees should stay. But that's not what Councilor Dubin I was hoping for. Councilor, yeah, okay, if I can just continue with that, Mayor Redekop, then what happens is. With the, uh, the region's bylaw, right, then it falls under, if it's more than a hectare, I think, then it falls under the region. If it's a hectare or less, I think, it, it, then we maintain it with our own tree bylaw. So I think now we have to look at the region bylaw and what their policies are as far as their bylaw goes. Now, having said all of that, right, looking at the region's bylaw, right, in section, I think it's section four, it says that the town is exempt from their, from section three of their bylaw, which the municipality, the town of Fort Erie, we can go in and we can cut trees down as long as we're doing it for ourselves. So we don't have to follow their, their bylaw as per se, right, as far as damaging and injuring trees. But we still have to follow guidelines on how we do it. And I don't know if now we have to talk with the region about that. Well, Councillor, if the bylaw doesn't apply to the municipality, it doesn't apply to the municipality. Mr. Brady, does, does the regional bylaw uh, with respect to this issue um, apply to the municipally owned property? 
Uh, no, it does not. And I can also provide you one other piece of information that the Conservation Authority has given me on a number of occasions, and that is that the regional tree violet does also does not apply to dead trees. Okay, and okay, so the regional bylaw doesn't apply to this particular situation. It doesn't apply to dead trees. It doesn't apply to municipally owned property. Yes, yes, I I understand. That's what I said. It doesn't apply. Well. If the municipality is operating, right, and doing the cutting themselves, then fine, right? But it is. Yeah, and that's what I said. That we're exempt okay. from the region's bylaw. Good. Right. I know that. But the thing is, is the guidelines around that bylaw and how we go about doing things, because it's more than a hectare. Does, does that does that affect us? Do we have to follow their guidelines? Or do we follow our own? No, the, the, if it doesn't apply to municipally owned property, it doesn't apply, whether with respect to restrictions on cutting or on the policies that apply to that. It doesn't apply to the municipality. So it's up to the town to uh, take care of this and be guided by our own policies. Yes, I understand that. But, and that's fine if that's the way they, but still. It just it takes us back to good forestry practices that's right. and leaving the trees on the on the on the floor or on the ground. Got but that. I agree with Mr. Miller that what they did and that didn't look good. And you don't cut a tree down and let it lean up against another tree and just leave it that way. Right. You know that looked terrible. You know, but I have other properties the same way. And nothing got done. So now we have to look at. Are we gonna go into Canada Drive and clean this up? Or are we gonna go all over Fort Erie and clean them up? Well, we're gonna look at the property on Canada Drive, which is the subject of the yeah. resolution. And then uh, the request is that there be some further review of the situation on town-owned properties. That's, I believe, the gist of the motion. Well, I, I can't. Well, let's, let's let counselor. Okay, I know you I can't, can't support, support cleaning okay. up one property without uh, knowing you clean them up all, cleaning up all of them. Okay, counselor Dubinoff. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just to address some of the uh, comments brought up by uh, Councillor Luberts with regard to uh, good forestry practices, if his concern is about, you know, ensuring that good forestry practices are maintained when. Uh, you know, either disposing or perhaps even finding a way to clean these up in place. It's, it's a right part of the resolution. So they'd be bound by good forestry practices if this resolution passes. So I, I, I'm, I'm curious where we're going there. Um, the second part of it is because the, uh, the way the region bylaw applies to the municipal property, that's why this resolution makes specific reference to town-owned property because that's where we have the ability to control this. And so if we're sending in contractors that were paying for as a town to clear these properties. Um, I, I think it's um, a, a little um, upsetting, if you will, when someone comes back because these properties have been left or these woodlots have been left in a certain condition without us as a town being able to give direction to the contractors we hire to ensure that these trees are dealt with appropriately. So that's the intent of this. It, the intent is good forestry practices to ensure that these woodlots going forward on a case-by-case -case basis are uh, dealt with in a way that um, ensures that residents' concerns are met. Anyone else? Councillor Luberts, you've, you've had 10 minutes to talk about this. If you're gonna... Well, let's let's hear okay let's hear what you have to say but if you're going to be repeating what you said before you've already said it we've we've heard it so take a run at it and I'll I'll see where you're well, going uh, thank you very much and I just want to comment on councillor Dubinow and I'm not saying that we shouldn't go and and tell the contractors that they need to do a better job but we can't you're asking us to direct staff to facilitate the removal and disposals of the trees that fell down so you want to remove them and dispose of them on an, somewhere else in a manner consistent with good the forestry good forest management. practice forestry practice says leave them on the ground okay well then so then if you're going to follow it you can't 
have of half the uh, that tell you to remove them and the other half tell you to violate the, the practices. Okay. You can't, can't do that. Okay. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of the resolution? Opposed? That is carried. That uh, takes us to motions. Are there any, sorry, notices of motions? Are there any notices of motion this evening? If not, uh, that takes us to the report relative to the uh, property in Buffalo Heights on Richmond Avenue, which was previously before council on February the 19th. Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm going to ask to move to defer this to the next uh, regular council meeting um, so that we have time to ask Mr. Brady to um, verify whether or not the um, Carlos Gomez Rodriguez and Alyssa have moved on to a different parcel and are no longer interested in this one. Uh, okay, so I would suggest that this go to the April the 8th Council and Committee meeting because it is a, it is a report. So uh, is there a seconder for that, Councillor Zanko? There's no debate other than with respect to when it goes to, which is April the 8th. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. So that's eight to April the 8th, Madam Clerk. That takes us to consideration of bylaws. Does anyone wish any of the two items removed from the package? If not, then Councillor Zanko, would you pl please proceed with first and second reading? Yes, thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor McDermott, that bylaw package containing 49-2019 to authorize the entry into a lot grading agreement with Dinesh Mystery 1235 Orchard Avenue. 50-2019 to adopt the capital budget and general levy operating budget for the town of Fort Erie for the year of 2019 is given first and second reading. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. That bylaw package is on the floor for questions or comments. If there are none, Councillor Noyes, would you proceed with third and final reading, please? Oh, thank you, Mayor Redekop. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Dubineau that bylaws number 49, 2019, and 50, 2019 are given third and final reading, be signed by the mayor and the clerk under the corporate seal. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Uh, Councilor McDermott, you have first and second reading for the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Lubertz that bylaw number 51 2019 to confirm the actions of Council and its Council meeting held on March 25th, 2019, and its special closed session meeting held on March 25th, 2019 is given first and second reading. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Councillor Lubert, you have third and final reading for the confirmatory bylaw? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Redekop. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McDermott that bylaw number 51 2019 is given third and final reading to be mayor, signed by the mayor and the clerk under the corporate seal. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. That takes us to scheduling of meetings. Councillor Dubino. Yes, thank you, Worship. Uh, tomorrow at 9.30 a.m., we have a regional transportation steering committee meeting at uh, regional headquarters in uh, regional council chambers. And on Wednesday, February 27th, we have a Community Gaming Development Corporation Board of Directors meeting uh, here at Town Hall at 5.30 in Boardroom 1. Did I say February? I meant March. 27th? Yes. February 27th was, well. <laughs> Any other meetings? Councillor Noyes. Thank you, Mayor Riddikop. On tomorrow, the 26th, we have an accessibility um, committee meeting um, at 5 o'clock. There's also on uh, March 28th at 5 o'clock, the short term, the round table short term rental um, discussion at 5 o'clock on the 28th. Also, is that, is that here in the town hall? Uh, yes. And on April the 3rd, there's a senior citizens advisory committee meeting at 10 o'clock at Lions Heights Senior Center. And I, there's also a, um, I, I think, Councillor. <laughs> I think someone else is going to mention there's also a meeting coming up, but uh, I'll let the chair mention it. Councillor Butler. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so on Wednesday, April 3rd at uh, 4 p.m., there is a planning and development meeting, which I think is what uh, Councillor Noyce was trying to get at. And also at 5.15 on Wednesday, April 3rd, there is a Ridgeway BIA meeting at uh, St. Luke's Church. And that's it for me. Any other meetings? Councillor Lubritz. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mayor Redicott. Uh, tomorrow evening at the uh, residence of Mary Pacero, we're having an SPCA meeting at uh, 6 o'clock. Any other meetings? Then uh, it takes us to Councillor Zanko. Why don't I have an intro? Is there another meeting to go? Or another you? meeting, yeah. Sorry. Did you want to, is there another meeting you want to there is yeah, go ahead. Um, on Wednesday, March the 27th, there is an infrastructure uh, committee meeting here at Town Hall and Conference Room 3 at 5.30. 4 o'clock, sorry. Room 4. <laughs> Room 4 at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Okay. Would you like to now adjourn this meeting? 27th. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor McDermott, that Council adjourns at 7.24 p.m. to reconvene into special meeting of Council on April 8th, 2019. Madam Clerk, is that a special meeting or is that a uh, Council and Committee? Okay. Okay, all those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Thank you.